Hey, welcome to White Clay Creek State Park. I'm Laura, I'm the park superintendent, and I'm glad to have you here today. I'm really thrilled to live and work here at White Clay Creek State Park. I like to think of it as our cheapest health club in the state, and you sure can't beat the scenery. So a lot of people don't realize that as a superintendent, my job is to balance our mission. It's not only to provide you with safe and enjoyable recreation spaces, but also uh, to be responsible stewards of the land here. And that means the environment as well as the history. So it's a pretty big challenge to balance those two. So why don't you come along and see a little bit about what it's like to be here. One of the things we have planned for 2021 is working on that trail etiquette message. So we're starting to reach out to a lot of our user groups like bikers, hikers, birders, runners, because we want everybody in together on this message so we can teach everybody how to use our trails safely. That means not only masking up when you can't stay six feet apart, but just respecting other user groups and so we can all share it safely. So our trails crew and our planner have been pretty busy this year. Uh, we completed a connector to Middle Run from White Clay at Paper Mill Road. So we've built a new bridge and all weather gravel paths. And we also completed a 1.25 mile all weather loop over at Whiteley Farms, which has been really popular in 2021. And lastly, we've also completed four miles of all weather trail over at Whiteley Farms. So it's a great place to come out and ride your bike. Oh, thanks for warning me. Thanks for wearing your mask. One of the battles we're fighting here with our environmental stewardship team is invasive species. They're taking over the park. About 85% of our forested areas are considered poor quality because of the plants there. We're fighting a battle against Alanthus, which is tree of heaven. That's the number one host for the spotted lanternfly. So we have a goal to take all of those down. We're trying to get rid of things like Japanese stilt grass and my personal nemesis, garlic mustard. We even build a garlic mustard composting bin because if you're not careful about how you dispose of it, you're just gonna end up with a lot more. Oh, look, Caitlin's in there. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm our volunteer manager here at White Clay Creek State Park. I'm standing in our garlic mustard bin. Garlic mustard is incredibly invasive and previously when we worked with the plant, we had to bag it and then put it in a dumpster to be sent to a landfill. However, our wonderful environmental stewardship staff has built this incredible bin for us. And this bin allows us to remove the garlic mustard from the forest and allow it to decompose naturally without having to send it to a landfill. Garlic mustard has the ability to continue to flower and produce seed even when it's removed from the ground. So that's why we had to bag it before. We're excited to have a second year with this amazing bin, help out our staff and our volunteers. Caitlin's one of our busiest volunteer managers in the parks. We've had over 500 volunteers this year and 11,500 hours of service. They do all sorts of work from bluebird box monitoring, adopt a trail, adopt a hunting stand. They're very active with our invasive species removal. And the Friends of White Clay Creek State Park really helped to spearhead a lot of that work, especially staffing our nature center. So we're really fortunate to have Caitlin and the great volunteer staff that we do. This year we completed phase two of the Tri-Valley Trail, which provides this all weather surface for all ages and abilities. And it also connects us to the Paper Mill Park. I live right down the road from this trail and it's really a pleasure to see people of all ages and abilities able to enjoy the park now. I've seen older folks rehabbing from surgery, people in wheelchairs, kids learn to ride their bikes. It's really been a great experience seeing how many people are now able to come out and enjoy some exercise and fresh air. Another project we started this year is now we're adding some benches to the Tri-Valley Trail so that people have a place to rest. This is an accessible bench. It was installed by Eagle Scout Aiden and we really appreciate it. It has a little space here on the end where a wheelchair can wheel right up and sit next to you. With the addition of a little bit of asphalt here on the front, it's gonna be completely accessible to people. 
One of the challenges of parks is we have a lot of aging infrastructure and deferred maintenance. As we acquire open space to preserve it, it comes with buildings, roads, and things that need improvement, and we don't have enough money to catch up on all of those immediately. So we have to really keep an eye on things, stay on top of projects, and make sure they don't turn into higher dollar projects. We had a sinkhole here that our very observant Lieutenant McDerby saw, he let me know. Uh, we were able to bring out our planning department. We had a temporary fix done, but long term, the corrugated pipe underneath this road is compromised, so it needs to be replaced. So we're always trying to catch up on these things, and it's really important that our maintenance staff stays on top of that, and they do a great job. They're the eyes and the ears of the park when it comes to our maintenance. We have a lot of historic buildings at White Clay, and farming is a big part of the story here, so we obviously we have a lot of barns and outbuildings. Finding creative ways to fund the adaptive reuse and the stabilization can really be a challenge, but these buildings are really part of the historic character and the landscape of our park. The first step is to assess the situation and find out what challenges we have that would keep us from restoring or saving these barns. Now that we have an engineering plan for this building, we have a path forward to come up with some ideas for how we might be able to save this barn. We have historic buildings everywhere. We have this one, this one, and these. So here at the Judge Morris Estate, we are thinking outside the box with some creative funding to make sure that this building is stabilized and lasts for another 150 years. We've partnered with a vendor, Brandywine Prime, and you can rent Emma's Pond at Judge Morris Estate for your special event, whether it's a wedding or a party, a graduation. It's a beautiful scene, and it's nice to know that your rental dollars are partially going back right into the building to help with stabilization. I'm here at the Nature Center, and I gotta tell you that our educators really hit it out of the ballpark this year. Our park interpreters are amazing. They figured out how to do virtual activities with at-home activities for the kids. They successfully ran safe summer camps. They booked private wagon rides. Their Wednesday Wonders series sold out. They came up with a new virtual trail that's great for new users. It's amazing to me all that they've accomplished. In my eyes, they are superheroes. We could not accomplish what we do here at the park without a dedicated friends group. <laughs> hey look, there's Dave now. Hey Hello. Dave, good to see you. Good to see you. Virtual. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Dave's our president. Thanks, Laura. The, uh, the Friends of White Clay Creek State Park is the organization for people who love and use the park, for people who appreciate it and want to support its long-term health and vitality. Uh, the Friends do this through volunteer work, through fundraising, and through advocacy. So some of the volunteer work we do, for example, is uh, we staff the folks who are uh, build and uh, maintain the bird boxes, uh, the nature center, and, and things like that that help the park out. We do fundraising, a lot of it at the concerts. Uh, of course, funds also come in through donations, and we also manage a lot of the grants that come into the, uh, the park. And the third area is advocacy, where we try on behalf of the public to get funds that are going to help the long-term health of the park. So that's the three major areas that we get involved in, and we would really appreciate getting more members to help us with this long-term uh, goal. We'd love to have you join the Friends organization. You can go to our website where you can join or donate, and you can visit our Facebook page as well. Just keep in touch with us, get in touch, and we'll find a place for you in our organization. Thank you. All right, that's all for today. I have to get back to work, but I hope you join me again for my next video in March. I'll be talking about our enforcement staff and our maintenance staff as well. They've been doing an amazing job during 2020. So have a great day, and I hope to see you at the park soon.